UBS, out with earnings last week, it did disclose a $774 million loss. That was related to, of course, fallout from the failure of Arcagos. This, as its new CEO, embarks on a tech-led transformation of what is the world's largest wealth manager. Joining me now in his first U.S. interview since becoming CEO of UBS is Ralph Hammers. Good to have you this morning, uh, Ralph. And, uh, you know, let, let's, you've t- talked a lot about Arcagos, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But one quick question here to start. You talk about improved risk controls on the conference call. What specifically are you doing to improve risk controls at the prime brokerage at UBS? Yeah, good morning, David, and uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, well, clearly, you know, if you look at the first quarter, uh, we first focused on keeping a very strong uh, momentum there and being laser focused on our clients, and that actually produced quite a good result even after this loss, right? So uh, our uh, profit before tax was up uh, 14% to $2.3 billion. Uh, but it didn't. It, it did include a, uh, a loss uh, on Arquigas uh, in the amount of 774. Now, clearly, we're disappointed at that, um, and we're taking it very seriously. And as I have been telling and updating the analysts and also our shareholders as to what we're doing here, we're really reviewing different processes as to you know uh, what worked well, what didn't work well. Clearly, you know some mistakes have been made in terms of you know processes did not uh, work the way they should have worked. So. I think the, the first analysis here is, is a combination of a lack of transparency as to what was the, the true position of your counterpart, you know, beyond yeah. what you do with the, as a bank with that counterpart. And then on the other side, uh, the, the clearly a concentrated position that the counterpart was taking as a consequence of which, you know, the execution of your position uh, will lead to a, uh, well, a massive flow to the market. And with that, you saw the, the, the prices dropping of some of the long holds. Yeah. Uh, and of course, some of what you're discussing may also rely on regulators sort of changing some of the rules and increasing transparency in that swaps market. Um, Ralph, you spent a lot of time on the conference call as well talking about sort of your strategic view for the company in the future. And a lot of that related to technology, uh, almost a tech driven reimagining. You say the first step in how we deliver the client experience relies on technology. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that I think everybody recognizes that, that, you know, for certainly a decade already, uh, technology has become increasingly important for every industry, uh, but truly disruptive for many industries. And I think the financial industry has been a little bit you know, uh, slow in that and picking up the importance of technology, although there's a couple of players that are truly leading this uh, as, as, as you know, incumbents. Um, but there's so many new different players that show us the, the way and lead us the way that you know you gotta have uh, gotta embrace technology and make it part of your DNA. So basically what I'm saying here is that where banks would normally focus on okay, so how can we cater for our clients, how can we service our client, how can we deliver best advice, which all stays the same, right? It's just about the delivery and delivery front to back, the redesign of your client journey in terms of the delivery of some of the product and some of the services. You got to really do that with technology in mind from the start, and not thinking that okay, let's let's leave that over to let's leave that to the technology guys. No, no, it's got to be run by the commercial guys who truly know what clients want, and uh, and that is the important change in my view. All right, now there was some criticism. I think I'm reading a report from Andrew Coombs. He's a bank analyst with Citigroup, who said, listen, you, you know, your your presentation was full of buzzwords, but lack detail and seemed to indicate any changes will only be around the edges rather than any big strategic shift. How do you respond to that criticism? Well, uh, look at the core strategy of, uh, of UBS. We are the world's global uh, wealth manager. Uh, and so therefore our core strategy is being an asset gatherer or wealth gatherer and managing that uh, on behalf of our clients and, and the capabilities that we need in order to support that and, and do that really well. And there's nothing wrong with that direction. So to the extent people thought that we were going to change direction, there's nothing wrong with that direction because the, the, the wealth growth in the world continues. Um, and I think the big change that we've made to the strategy though is that we have said, well, in that wealth growth, uh, if you look at the underlying trends, there's two big pools in the world, the US pool where we are a big player and that's really strategic to us. And the Asian pool is already a big pool and it will grow even faster. So these are already big pools and they will grow fast. That's the trend that we are going to bank. And the underlying trends there uh, that you have to be much more precise in is the ones that have to do with entrepreneurial wealth as a growth factor, ESG as a theme for investing, as well as the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the core element 
of, uh, of, of, of China as a busy a, a, a market that is really in need of some of the wealth products uh, that we would deem as normal, but still have to be introduced there. So there is really some true, true opportunities there that, uh, that we're focusing right. on. And it's really that focus. So it's not so much a change of direction, but it's really a true focus as to where we, uh, where we put our resources. That is, that is the difference. Um, Ralph, you know, your competitor in, the, in Switzerland, so to speak, the other large bank, uh, Credit Suisse, uh, took it a lot harder than you guys did when it came to Archegos. In fact, raising some questions about its overall business model. Is it ever a ma uh, something you could imagine where Swiss regulators would encourage UBS and CS to get together? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I think what you see with UBS is that uh, we're a strong bank. Uh, we, we do display Swissness from that perspective in terms of, you know, being reliable, trust, uh, 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 and, and predictable. Uh, I think those are core components for, for wealthy clients to be able to bank on. In the first quarter, on the back of the good results, we have been able to e even further improve our core tier one ratio, so our basic right. core capital that we, that we hold in order to ensure that, uh, that clients can really rely on us. I think that's the important factor and for us, the organic growth uh, direction and the organic growth uh, uh, direction is the one that we prefer. Ralph, I'm afraid we're on, uh, out of time, uh, but certainly look forward to uh, having and continuing this conversation. Appreciate your joining us. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.